Parker Kitty. Welcome to our build series for our 4 inch scale Burrell DCC traction engine kit by Steam Traction World. For this video, we will be showing assembly of the horn plates. This is kit 10 in the series. Since many of the parts in this kit include bearing surfaces, we began preparing the parts by taping off these surfaces to prevent paint and debris getting into these areas. Seams on the main axle bearing casting were blended slightly before painting this part. Oil boxes were prepared by securing the oil wick tube into the central hole of each box. The high strength retainer fluid supplied previously was used for these parts. The parts were then cleaned and primed with POR15 metal prep according to the directions. The tube openings were taped off. After that, the parts were primed, then coated in several coats of the POR15 fuel tank sealer. Time was allowed for each coat to dry and the parts were lightly sanded and cleaned between each coat. The crank bearing caps also have wick oiling tubes, which were installed the same as in the oil boxes. All the oiling tubes were first cleaned and polished with medium to fine sandpaper to break down the oxidation. The flywheel brake pivot and bolting block need to be fitted to match the curvature of the left horn plate. A combination of Dremel, files, and sandpaper were used to slowly remove material where necessary to achieve a good fit between all pieces. The parts were continually attached to the horn plate to study what areas needed material removed so the mating surfaces were flush. A combination square was also used regularly to be sure the brake pivot shaft was squared to the horn plate in all directions. I found it helpful to use a permanent marker to mark areas on the parts that needed filing and grinding. The brass handles for the oiler box lids need polishing. We use the nut that will be used to secure the handle to the box lid and tightened it down on the handle. This was then clamped in our Sherline mill with the mill head turned horizontal. Successively finer grades of sandpaper were used on the part while being spun to allow for a very bright polished finish on the parts. These were then secured to the painted oil box lids with the supplied nut. The spring hanger bracket was fastened to the second shaft axle box. The water gauge bracket was attached to the second shaft too. Study the instructions and diagrams to ensure correct orientation of all parts. After this, the second shaft tube and box were bolted together.
After painting, the main axle oil boxes were fastened to the main axle bearing casting. O-rings are supplied to place between the casting and the oil box. There is a depression in the bearing casting on each side to locate the O-rings. The instructions show the correct orientation of the oil boxes to the bearing casting. The oil box lids for the crank bearing oilers were polished to remove all casting and tool marks. The bosses for the lid pivot pins and the lids themselves had to be filed slightly so the lids would fit correctly on the top of the oil boxes. Hinge pin holes also needed to be drilled out so the hinge pins could be pressed into place. Once complete, the lid should pivot freely to uncover the oil reservoirs. Another mistake, right? Of course. You know, there are just too many misunderstandings and too many mistakes involved here, Barney. Now listen to me, I'm going to level with you. I think you're lying. I don't know anything about the Forest Service. Maybe you are a ranger, but I don't buy any piece of the rest of your story. I'm getting tired of all this. If you don't believe me, I'll just have to stop talking. There's no use going on. Now, if you don't want the truth, then I'm going to stop talking. Friday? Yeah, see you a minute. Captain Beeson informed us that a team checking out the names on the credit cards came up with a sporting goods operator who reported his wallet missing or stolen the night before. It contained one of the cards in Regal's possession. The man claimed the wallet was missing after he had attended a talk given by a representative of the U.S. Forest Service. Small set screws which are used as jacking screws were installed in the proper holes of the left crank bearings casting. These will be used later to help with crankshaft alignment to the right hand bearing. Two studs were screwed into the left bearing casting to eventually hold the left crank bearing cover in place. The water pump bearing casting was also bolted in place on the left horn plate. The right hand crank bearing was installed. Next we secured the main and second shaft bearings to the left horn plate, then test fitted the right horn plate to the assembly. This also allowed fitting of the front and rear spectacle plates.
we discovered the rear spectacle plate right side mounting holes did not align to the holes in the right crankshaft bearing casting. The issue was the bottom of the flange on the right side of the spectacle plate resting on the top of the bearing casting. We ground the bottom edge of the flange slightly to allow the plate to sit a bit lower on the right bearing casting, allowing the holes to align properly. While fastening the rear spectacle plate on the left horn plate, Note that the ash pan lever support must be fitted in the third hole from the top of the plate. The subassembly of the horn plates with the bearing housing kit is for a test fit only at this point. Final fitting of these parts follows later when attaching the assembly to the boiler. There are two bearings that must be press fit into the left hand rear wheel hub. We found the hub needed some slight grinding for the bearings to fit comfortably. Ours were a light press fit. A bit of bearing grade adhesive was added to the outer diameter of the bearings to hold them in place. We also took this time to test fit the main axle into each rear wheel. The right hand wheel hub also required some slight grinding and sanding to get the axle to fit smoothly into the hub. We also made sure there were no raised edges along the length of the axle. We did find a few ridges left from the machining process that needed smoothing with a fine file and sandpaper. Once done, the axle fit well onto the rear wheels. The spring connecting rod was bolted to the spring hanger bracket, passing through the left-hand oil box cover. This part is non-functional on our model engine. At this point, we took some time to test fit or place all components and sub-assemblies together to appreciate the final size of the engine. We figured the engine is about one-third complete at this point. Although not in kit order, our next kit to arrive would be the belly tank, kit 17. That will be shown in our next installment.